Of course, those are my worst fears written down by some person I don't know. If someone doesn't want you to have the only thing in life that you've ever dreamt of, then maybe they're not the right partner. Say that again. I love you. Look at us crying like two <laughs> fools. <laughs> How is motherhood going? Oh, Justin, it's the best. It is the absolute best. I mean, you know what's so funny? Yesterday, um, Haley wasn't feeling herself and I couldn't get her to go back to sleep even though she was okay. And all of a sudden I just sat there and I was with her and I said, do you just want me to hold you? And she looked at me and she m muttered like into my chest, she said, yes. And I said, Whoa. does it just feel good to be held sometimes? And she said, yes. And she literally fell asleep, like her heart was just resting. And I'm constantly like, I'm, I feel like my heart didn't know it had this much room inside. Yeah. I thought I had had and received and given a lot of love and I didn't know that there was this capacity. I didn't even know what this thing ever felt like, but I've been loving every minute of it, Justin. You talked about maybe having a third is what I read. Well, here's the thing. I'm a big believer in putting things out into the universe and saying like, God, what do you have for us? So I feel like there are kids who need us. Yeah. They need you, they need me. And um, their lives could be rich and full of love and, and togetherness. But I feel like Haley and Hope, they always say, did we, you know, Haley says, did we come from your tummy? And I said, no, you came from my heart. Like oh. you came from my heart. They're every bit of mine. What if you would have spoken your truth out loud about your desires to have a child and your partner wasn't down for that ride again because he had already been down that road? That happens to a lot of women. For me, when I explained to Joel how much it mattered to me, that I couldn't rest or sleep. And he said, well, like, let's do it. Like he, he didn't hesitate. If he did hesitate, if he was somebody who said, well, I'm not really sure if it's for me or I don't think so, no. I think it would have, I would have wondered if I had chosen right. I would have definitely um, rethought all of my relationship because if someone doesn't want you to have the only thing in life that you've ever dreamt of, then maybe they're not the right partner. Say that again. Yes. Coda, <laughs> say that again for the people in the back. But I do think it's true. If someone you love knows how badly you want something, you have a desire that won't quit, and somehow they say, no, honey, I don't think that works for me. They don't love you enough. There is this thing that happens to women in society that they think, okay, my clock is done. This is not for me. I'm too old for this. I yeah. can't start my family right now. How did you combat those negative thoughts? Because it seems like that's instilled in all of us. Yeah, there, I mean, that is something you can't help but do the math, you know, because you're a human being and all you want is for your children to have a beautiful long life. I mean, who doesn't dream it, of being at their child's high school graduation, their child's uh, college graduation, their wedding, their first child, all of these milestones you dream about. But I think, you know, when I think about it, like I'm really trying to live in the be here now because yeah. my dad passed when I was um, a sophomore in college. Freshman. And I, I had him for, for those years up till my 20s, uh, my, well, my late teens, early 20s. And I felt like I got a rock solid foundation and I still think about him at this age and wonder what he would think and ask for advice and stuff. So when someone's in your life, I don't know that the length of time means everything. It's like, what are you doing with that time? I think yeah. there are a lot of young parents, and I don't blame them because I would have been the same way, who are running around, running around, because you have to do everything. And you don't, yes. you know, you're missing, you're missing a lot of things. So I'm trying to, to put a lot of quality time in a shorter window. Um, yeah. And it's really fun. And I feel like I'm, I'm probably a lot better uh, uh, of a parent now than I would have been um, a while ago, but. I think you're right. I think you're right. And I think there's yeah. something about figuring out exactly what you want at the perfect time because yeah. you're not 
second guessing. This is not yes. a, a something that you're doing for a spouse or a parent yes. or approval. It's like, I'm doing this for me. I received a, a letter addressed to my home with a return address I didn't recognize and a handwriting I didn't know. Usually when you get a letter, it's from someone you know. And, and I you opened it. I opened no. it. And well, yeah, I opened it because I was like, oh, because sometimes people will send like, a, I, I took a picture with them somewhere. Will you sign it and return it? You know, sometimes they do that. I, yeah. I don't know how people get your home address, but who cares? I don't know. So I had just opened one and it was this woman who started off with kind of um, like, how dare you? And I was like, what? Like, huh? And she said, I can't believe that you thought it was a good idea to become a mother you know, what? in your early 50s. And she just sort of went off. And I was reading and I was looking at handwriting and it was a person with a pen and a paper and they sat at a table and they wrote it. And it said, you know, if you didn't do the math, I'll do it. When they're in high school, you know, you know and they, she literally wrote all this down. And she, tried, she read you in the letter. Yeah. And what happened was in that letter was, of course, those are my worst fears written down by some person I don't know, but she wasn't a coward. She signed it and she did have her return address there. I was so upset that I shredded it. I, I literally tore it up sitting there. I was by myself in the living room. I just tore it up and I was trying to forget it. But inside I was thinking to myself and I thought about it again. And I'm thinking about it this moment right now. It was probably like, a, it was probably three or four weeks ago I got it. And I thought, why am I so upset? Well, I'm upset because someone wrote that. And I'm, I think yeah. I'm upset because it was one of the things I'm the most afraid of. And someone wrote it down. I know wow. they, they berated me about it. I, it was just the fact that that's something that scared me anyway, before she wrote that. Anyway, some things get stuck in your craw and you try to shake it off, but we're human and it hurts. So you just go about your day and you say, well, I love my kids harder today. I hope she's wrong, you know. I wish that you had called me. I have this thing called phone a gay friend and it's for women and I give everybody a pass. And whenever you're feeling like you are not sure about something yeah. and you need a gay in your life, but you don't have a constant gay who's gonna tell you the truth, you can go ahead and call that hotline and I will answer and say phone a, phone a gay friend hotline. And as your friend and as the person planning your bachelorette party as we've already established, yes. I would have told you to keep that letter mm. and every year on your daughter's anniversary of her oh. adoption, I want you to write this woman and tell her not only all, all of the joy that she has brought to your life, but all of the joy that you bring to hers. Mm. And I want you to tell her the mistakes you made that year, the person that you have become from those mistakes, and how you won't repeat them the next year. I wish you would have kept that oh, address. I want to cry. Oh. You know what I mean? And it's crazy because I'm the same way. I will hold on to strangers' words and I can't kick them out of my head. Yeah. And it's weird, as strong and as confident as I am, sometimes it's the words of strangers that bring me to my knees. Yeah. Where is Kathy Lee with the wine when we need it? I don't know. It? I think it's a shrink. That's the next year, next job. <laughs> I am so happy that I got to talk to you. I'm so proud of this episode of Just a Sip. It's probably one of my favorites that I will ever do in my life. When I cut this and send it to your daughters in 15 years, when they're old enough to understand the things that you have been saying today, what message do you wanna leave them with? Do not do this to me. No, I wanna know. I wanna know. 15 years. You have given me so much to think about in this. And I know one day they're going to Google you and look at this interview. Okay. And Alien they are going to understand you. Alien hope. Um, well, just that they made me the happiest I've ever been. That's it. I love you. I love you. I will see you on that set. Okay. Look at us crying like two <laughs> fools. <laughs> Goodbye, Justin. Love you. I love you. Uh, Thank ya. you. Ooh. All right, you guys. To listen to this whole interview, go to wherever you listen to podcasts, click on Just a Sip, and sip this tea. Like what you saw? Hit subscribe. You don't want to miss any new episodes of Just a Sip, and you can catch up on any past episodes. The tea was hot. I'm telling you.